slides. We can have a moment of silence to keep in our thoughts and prayers that our troops, our law enforcement, and all emergency responders always return home safe. Thank you. Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. In accordance with the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Law, notice that this public meeting has been published in the Home News Tribune, inspired by the newspapers, and posted on the Middlesex County website, as well as the Bulletin Board of the Middlesex County Administration Building, and 48 hours in advance of this meeting, which I'll be introduced in the next meeting. Roll call. County Commissioner Osler Garber. Here. County Commissioner Penny. County Commissioner Coppel. Here. County Commissioner McCollum. County Commissioner Nara. Here. County Commissioner Tanara. Here. County Commissioner Director Rios. Here. Do you have recognitions? Yes. Recognizing the honorees of the Polish flag raising, recognizing the honorees of the 2024 Carter of Marriage Charity Ball, and recognizing the honorees of the Boy Scouts of America tribute to them. Is there a motion to adopt the recognitions? Second. County Commissioner Asquena Barber? Yes. County Commissioner Koppel? Yes. County Commissioner Nara? Yes. County Commissioner Tamara? Yes. County Commissioner Director Reyes? Yes. We have correspondence. Each Commissioner has been provided with a list of correspondence received by the first office since our last meeting. This correspondence will be kept on trial and we'll also be brought to the office. Is there a motion to accept the correspondence approval? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Minutes of approval? Minutes of the regular meeting held Tuesday, October 1st, 2024. Is there a motion to approve? Second. County Commissioner Asquena Barber? Yes. County Commissioner Koppel? Yes. County Commissioner Nara? Yes. County Commissioner Tamara? Yes. County Commissioner Director Reyes? Yes. Commissioner Reports. Commissioner Clara Bell Thank you, uh, Director Reyes. On Thursday, October 24th, from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m., the Office of Agent and Disabled Services will host a virtual LGBTQ plus seminar for older adults. This seminar will discuss relevant topics and help us to learn more ways to be inclusive. November is National Caregiver Month and we will host an in-person caregiver conference on Thursday, November 21st from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m at the Pines Manor in Edison. To register for either event, contact the Office of Aging and Disabled Services or visit the county website. And that concludes my report, Director Hughes. Thank you. Commissioner Leslie Koppel. Thank you, Director. This is a reminder that the Middlesex County, that the Middlesex County has kicked off our annual auction process. Each year, the county makes a variety of surplus items available for public bidding. This continues to be a great opportunity for members of the public to purchase items that can serve new purposes. The auctions are hosted online through municibid.com. A user-friendly platform where anyone interested can create an account, browse the items, and submit their bids. It's important to note that all lots will be awarded to the highest bidder, so this is your chance to take advantage of some great deals. A first auction began on October 11th and has staggering end times up until October 18th at 4 p.m. This particular auction features office equipment, office furniture, and other miscellaneous items. Our second auction item is set to begin on October 25th at 9 a.m. with staggering closing times ending on November 1st at 4 p.m. It will feature vehicle, buses, construction equipment. For those wanting to inspect these items, you can visit the Central Vehicle Complex on Route 130 and Apple Orchard Road in North Brunswick on October 28th or 29th between 9 a.m. and 3 p.m. If you have any questions, feel free to contact the county's office of purchasing at 732-745-3277. We encourage everyone to take part in this year's auction. Thank you for your time, and we look forward to seeing your business. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Director Shinti Thank you, Director. From the Divisions of Environmental, Solid Waste, and Recycling, uh, we're getting to near the end of our shredding season, so uh, this Saturday, October 19th, it, our divisions will be hosting another paper shred event. The shred will be held at the Cranberry School, which is located at 23 North Main Street in Cranberry. The program will be held between 9 a.m. and noon, rain or shine, and residents may bring free of charge paper items for shredding, thus protecting personal information and their identity. There's no need to remove paper clips or staples, but please don't include other metals as these items can and have disabled the shredder's uh, devices. 
This is the next to last of our shreds for the calendar year. So for additional information on this program or any other planned event, kindly visit the county's website or please call our divisions at 732-745-4170. From the Office of the Medical Examiner, some decedents received to, uh, by our medical examiner's office have no next of kin and therefore are buried as unclaimed. Through the diligent efforts of the ME staff, these individuals are entered into the unclaimed persons section of the National Missing and Unidentified Persons System, NamUs, otherwise known as NamUs. NamUs is an innovative program that allows investigating agencies to enter their information into the program for the public to interact with or search for missing loved ones. This practice has resulted in the identification of multiple persons initially identified as unclaimed, thus providing closure to families. Our medical examiner's office covers Middlesex, Mercer, and Monmouth counties and is nationally acclaimed and a model of uh, MEOs throughout the country. And so I really want to give kudos to the staff for the hard work that they do here each and every day. And that's uh, my report director. Thank you. Commissioner Tanaro. Thank you, sir. Uh, well, it's the perfect time to get outdoors and enjoy the beautiful parks. We are entered in peak season to view the sunny colors of the changing leaves. Biking trails are paved walking paths in many of our parks and some of the best places to get moving while enjoying the fall weather. Check out the well-loved hiking trails in Davidson Mill Pond Park in South London, paved walking path around the lake in Roosevelt Park, or the marsh and woodland trails in the Pinot Forest in Woodbridge. And don't forget the Middlesex County Greenway, which tra traverses Hutchin, Woodbridge, and Edison. You can find more information on hike, hiking maps on our website and the search take a hike. Take a hike. Join the Middlesex County Conservation Corps at the next volunteer event this Saturday, October 19th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. The NRB Street Clean the Ocean Action is being held at Grand Bay Waterfront Park in South End, West Sarico. Come out and help to clean our shoreline beautiful, beautiful during the statewide event. December, Blazing the Park returns to the State Theater on Livingston Avenue for Joseph and Amazing Technical Dream Coat. This year marks the 27th anniversary of this holiday, holiday tradition. Performances are on Saturday, December 28th, and Sunday, December 29th, 2 p.m. and 7 p.m. Tickets go on sale at the theater website on November 22nd. We hope to see you there. That concludes my report. Thank you. <coughs> this is done. And do we have any resolutions to be added? There are none. And to be amended? There are none. And to be held? There are none. And to be voided? There are none. This time I open up the meeting to the public to discuss any items listed on the agenda, any resolutions listed on the agenda. Please you state your name and address and you have five minutes. Good evening, Charlie Prattville. I live here in New Brunswick. I'm the editor of New Brunswick. Today I'll start with the first one, the improvements to Woodbridge Avenue. Can you tell me you know, what kind of improvements these are? It's my understanding it's an expansion of the roadway, and you know, is this something that's going to make it safer or more dangerous? Ron? Um, sure, Charlie. This is a two-part project. There's seven signals. We're trying to uh, have all the links between the signals. It's not an expansion, but we will address sidewalk, and we're improving all the signals so that truck movements will move better. Thanks. Um, Next one is the Comprehensive Needs Assessment. This is uh, 1305, the Community Health Improvement Plan. Just wanted to uh, ask if you can shine any light on what, uh, what specifically you hope to accomplish with this. I'm sorry, Charlie, what was the resolution number again? 1305? Thank Correct. You. Thank you. So, Charlie, 1305. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, I have the wrong, I'm, I must have written it down wrong. I'm sorry, 1285. You know what? I, I'm going to apologize. I, I'm, my numbers are off here. I don't know where it is. I wrote this down based on what was on your website, but I, I can answer the question. That, no. It's um, it's a joint effort between the health the federal office of health services and the office of human services. So we're doing a comprehensive community needs assessment um, with an emphasis on behavioral health needs, um, and um, we'll have a report on the comprehensive needs assessment. But then in addition, they'll be doing the, they'll be doing the community health improvement plan. 
um, that's done for the community. I think we've done it two years. I'm not sure on that date. Gotcha. Um, but so it's a joint effort between the two of us. It's just Great. to identify needs really around social determinants. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, I, I will say, you know, in my area, unfortunately, uh, big, big factors are gun violence and drug addiction. And I'm sure that will be part of the, the findings that you, you have there. I hope that those will be addressed. Uh, 1320 is uh, to accept the traffic signal. This is the signal we talked about quite a bit last year. I just want to understand nothing's changing here. It's just sort of finalizing the installation. Uh, yes, Charlie, the signal is uh, fully operational tested and the county is accepting it into their system. Great. Um, this one's interesting. I mean, 1322 is, I guess, the county is uh, transferring ownership, jurisdiction, and maintenance of. Fifth Street in South Amboy. Can you tell me what prompted uh, this to happen? I haven't seen something like this before. Okay, yeah, that's me again. Um, yes, uh, if you know Fifth Street, it's a segment. It doesn't really act as a county road. So uh, we worked with the allow with uh, South Amboy. We would pay it to all the handicap ramps, and they would uh, maintain it in perpetuity. So we're transferring ownership of it. Zero. Uh, South Amboy. Monetary exchange, or just. No, we're just, we just milled and resurfaced the road, uh, and they're willing to accept it. Okay. Um, I see a couple of officials are going to Miami, Florida for the Via Transit Summit. This is 13, 1328 is the resolution. And I guess I would really love to hear from these folks or someone about the VIA program. Uh, we call the Middlesex County Ride, the pilot in New Brunswick. We're still in year one of it. But, um, you know, I, I would like to hear, you know, some information about how it's going and... Uh, talking about the resolution, Charlie. Right, yeah, it doesn't have to be right now, but I guess what I'm saying is, you know, before these folks go to Miami, or maybe right after they get back, since it's in a few days, they could come here and make a presentation to the public about Middlesex County Ride and how it's going. Or if they're not the best people, other people could. Um, but I just think this is the exact type of thing that the Transportation Coordinating Committee would be talking about every month, and we would have a lot more information about the program and how it's going, instead of the discussions taking place in a different state. And finally, 1340, Comprehensive Traffic Safety uh, Grant. Can you tell me what, uh, what this would uh, accomplish? <clears throat> Director, I can uh, comment on those. It's like, uh, it's some type of uh, uh, grant that comes between the county and the state that you Drunk driving uh, without cars and goggles, a uh, program that's with the funding for that group. So people can learn, learn right. what it's yeah, like uh, to drive. Right. Like, it goes around the county. It shows the examples of if you're driving drunk, what can happen. Right. It it simulates what it's like to, 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 to drive to drive intoxicated. Okay, that's all I have on the resolutions. Thank you. Is there a motion to call the call? Second. Call I'm sorry, what, uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote, motion carries. Okay, does any commissioner have to vote on anything separately? Yes, Director. Uh, resolution 24-1301 has to be removed from the consent agenda and voted separately due to a comment from the commissioner. Anyone else? That's it. Okay. Uh, therefore, a motion is now ordered to adopt the consent agenda consisting of resolution numbers 24. 1270 through 24-1361 and excluding resolution 24-1301 to be voted upon separately. Motion. Second. Vote Kennedy Commissioner Ansel Barber? Yes. Kennedy Commissioner Koppel? Yes. Kennedy Commissioner Nara? Yes. Kennedy Commissioner Canaro? Yes. Kennedy Commissioner Director? Yes. Now motion is in order to adopt resolution number 24-1301. So Second. Roll call. County Commissioner Ansel and Barber? Yes. County Commissioner Koppel? Yes. County Commissioner Nara? Yes. County Commissioner Brown? Yes. County Commissioner Gregory? Yes. At this time I open up the meeting to the public. Yes, please. Seeing none. I would like to speak, please. Oh. Thank you. I was surprised to hear you say that you made a mistake there before, Charlie. When I'm wrong, I admit it. 
Okay, state your name and address. Good evening, Charlie. Five minutes. Charlie Cradfield, New Brunswick, New Brunswick today. I got a few items I want to speak about. I know you just had a closed session where you discussed the open space acquisition. What can you tell us about this? The matter was discussed in closed session regarding contract negotiations, and therefore we cannot make any comment at the present time. Okay, did the commissioners agree to anything, or still no, up in the air? No negotiations. Okay, may I ask, did uh, Commissioner Ascona Barber recuse? She did, in fact. Okay. Um, Commissioner Director, can you tell me, do uh, you know why the County College Board meeting was uh, postponed? I, I, have, I have no idea. Okay. Um, I know I missed the last meeting, but two meetings ago I, I spoke about the cancellation of the track program there. I suggested that you read an article. I think I might have even handed you a copy. Did you find out, were you able to find out anything more on the, the cancellation of the track program at Middlesex College? From what I understand, I spoke to the college president, and he said that they have anticipation of resurrecting that program for next year. Uh, part of the problem is participation, a lack of participation, I guess, to, I don't know how many members they need on the team, but uh, that was part of the uh, issue that they had and but he said that they are going to make every effort to try to get that up and running for next year. Well, thanks for looking into it. I do feel like the current students that were led to believe there would be a season were shortchanged, and that's really unfortunate. And I uh, hope that everybody can get to the bottom of it and, like you said, restore the restore the team. Um, I know I've brought up traffic safety a lot. Route 1 continues to be one of the, the worst roads in the state when it comes to fatal crashes. Can you point to anything the county's doing about Route 1? Um, have you been able to have any conversations with state officials about it or anything at all? You know, i got to tell you something, Charlie, and I'm going to be perfectly honest with you. This board is very conscious of public safety. That is our number one concern. And I, in particular, lost my, my, a family member of mine lost a family member in an accident on Route 1 there last year where the gentleman was going to retire in two weeks. And it was not his fault, okay? And I'm not going to com comment any further on that specific issue. But I could assure you that whenever we can make improvements for traffic safety, education, you just heard the gentleman there talking about the grant that we're receiving and applying for it to try to educate people on how impaired driving can affect you, and any other program that we could do to make our roads safer, we're doing it. But obviously, we have no control over other people. And, and I am sorry for the loss there, I'm sorry for all the losses that folks have had. I, I'm going to move to the uh, uh, something that was adopted at the meeting I missed, the Middlesex County Planning Board. You approved an appointment of a new member, uh, got to uh, be at the meeting and see him uh, for the first time there. Um, I asked you what the requirements were to join. I, you said there were none. I think there's at least you have to be county president. Um, but I was curious if you do any kind of background check or um, any anything like that uh, on these folks. We're not going to make a comment on doing a background check on individuals. I mean, we're not a Gestapo organization here. Okay. Well, I'll bring to your attention that the gentleman you appointed, Mr. Chavo Lovato, pled guilty to driving while intoxicated on Route One. The offense was February 17th, and uh, yeah, the guilty plea was just a few months ago. I have the documentation here. I'm happy to share it with you. And I'm you know, a little disappointed, I think, with traffic safety on Route 1 being one of the most important issues for the county, um, to have someone with this on their record get that seat um, doesn't really so, so, sit. I, I can speak to that point. Okay. Um, my office did, in fact, review the matter, and there were no disqualifying facts or circumstances that would make him ineligible to serve as a planning board member. He has satisfied all court-ordered requirements, therefore not presenting an issue before this board. Yeah, I, I'm not suggesting he's ineligible, but what I am saying is he might not be the best choice. And I really uh, would like to learn more about the process of how he was appointed and how you choose these folks. Do you do any type of interviews? Were there other candidates considered? How did you end up picking this person for the position? People make mistakes, as I just mentioned earlier. It, you know, I'm not justifying anybody being under the influence, 
of people making mistakes. He didn't commit murder. Time he didn't up. violate a restraining order. Any of that. Okay? Your time is up. Thank you. Anyone else in the public? Second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Is there a motion to adjourn? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Being adjourned.